Hi, in this video, we are going to learn how you can deploy a deep learning model onto the web by using the Streamlit library. Or in short, how you can give a nice GUI to your model so that it can be more user interactive and you can send it to the users so that they can test your deep learning model. All right, so let's start this video. First of all, you have to install the module. For installation, you just have to say pip install Streamlit and once you hit enter it is going to install the streamlit in your pc so let's start by creating a blank repository let's call this model deployment and in this we will create a blank python script let's just call this app.py you can call it whatever you want to there is no restriction on in this so i'll give few minutes a uh, few seconds in telling you the basics of streamlit how you can use it and we are going to use those basics to create our or deploy our deep learning model so let's start so first of all we will have to import streamlit obviously it makes sense so we'll import by saying import streamlit as st now uh, there is a function called st.title you can call this and you can give uh, whatever title you want to so let's say we can give welcome to flower prediction app so if i save this now in order to run this uh, what you have to do is that open the terminal in the same directory uh, you can open the terminal and use the CD to navigate to the folder wherever your Python script or if you are running using Jupyter or uh, let's say using PyCharm you just directly hit the run button. Now in order to run this script you can't say python uh, app.py it is going to give you uh, error but what you have to do you have to say streamlit run and then python script name which is app.py once you hit enter it will going to automatically open the default browser in your PC in my case it's Chrome. Now you see that it is giving me message on the screen that welcome to the flat prediction app and everything is uh, looking so nice until over here. Now another function I would like to talk of is the input function. So how would we how would we be able to take the input from the user by using this browser? So for that we can say x is equals to, x is equals to st dot input. Uh, there are you see that few function camera input, date input, number input, text input, time input. We are going to use number input since we are going to work with our deep learning models. You can use text input if you if your use case is related to that now in that you will have to provide a label so let's say i would call this field one you can call this whatever you want to so for example we can say uh, the number of legs the number of feet for example whatever whatever you input you want from the user so if i hit save and open my browser again and over here you'll get the uh, notification that rerun the app so i'll click rerun you'll see that i have an input on the screen field one and if I give whatever value to this and I hit enter, then that value will be transferred to the x variable over here and I can use this value for my model print. Now the last function I would like to talk about is the button. So I can say button is equals to st dot button and in that again it requires the label. So we can say predict again you can call it whatever you want. Now, now to check if the button is clicked or not, very simple code you have to write is if btn meaning if btn is true meaning if the button is clicked if btn then we can uh, let's say write the message that st dot write now st dot write or st dot text there are few uh, these are few functions to write the text on the browser so we can say st dot text button clicked i can save this and again go back to browser and hit rerun and you see that i got the button on my screen over here and if i click on this button you see that we got the text is that button click so again if i click button then we get the text button click so these are few uh, basics which you need to know i guess this is enough for now for our use case which we are going to use for our uh, model deployment deep learning model for the purpose of this video i'm going to deploy my iris flower data set model uh, which I'm going to teach you how to create that um, which is very basic also. So let's just directly dive into the uh, model training part data loading and model training. If you want to skip that part I will provide the timestamp for that. You can directly jump to the next part where we are directly deploying our saved models. So let's directly shift to the model training. All right, so data we are going to use is this iris.data. I'll provide the link to this data in down description. So this is the data we are going to work with. There are total of 150 samples we have and the script I'm going to use for this is model.rain. I'm directly going to explain you this code because if I have to write this code, uh, 
um, which um, this video is more specific of teaching you how to deploy the model not how to train the model i have already done a couple of videos on this so i'll just explain you this code of our model so we are importing the model to create the model and layers we are using is directly input and dense layer and we are importing pandas to load the data and this is too categorical you'll see why we are importing this and of course we need numpy to work with the arrays so first of all we are loading the data by using pd.readcsv and we are converting that data frame to numpy array by saying dot values and that is transferred to the data now using this particular code we are shuffling our data so we are creating a list of random shuffled values from 0 to 149 so this random is a array of shuffled values from 0 to 149 and then we have created the copy of this data and we are iterating in this array and we are uh, shuff we are changing the value of this data c position where c is initially 0 and then incremented at every point up to 149 and that is over there very simple and easy code you can just pause and try to watch this once again now over here you see that we have the data of uh, we have total of five columns so first four columns are for the x input to the model and the last column is for the prediction which is y so that is exactly what we are saying so x will be all the rows and first four columns 0 1 2 3 and y will be the last column column 0 1 2 3 4 since the indexing starts from 4 this is the dictionary of labels meaning the labels we are going to use which is iris setosa and iris versicolor and then uh, iris virginica and this is the count variable uh, counter flag variable you'll see why we are needing this so what we are doing we are creating a label since you know that y is a list of or i should say array of all these strings uh, iris versicolor iris virginica let's just do one thing let's try printing the y and let me tell you what do i mean by that so i'll just say python model train.py since it's in the same directory all right so if i go above then you see that y is this iris virginica iris virginica since i since the model can't be trained on the strings we need a way to convert these strings into uh, integer or some sort of float value so for that we are creating a dictionary labels which is iterating first of all we are iterating in y and then we are checking if that i value meaning first we are iris virginica then iris virginica iris virginica then iris versicolor then we are checking if i is not in labels dictionary then that i is set as key and cnt which is unique integer which is initially zero is assigned to that particular key and then cnt is incremented by one so if we print the labels then you see that the labels we have is iris virginica is given zero index iris versicolor is 1 iris setosa is 2 and after that we are again iterating in the y and then we are replacing that string with the unique integer which we have saved in the labels very easy and straightforward code and after that we have converted the y to two categorical since after the conversion you'll see that print y print y this is before two categorical and after two categorical all right so you see that before two categorical it is something like this 0 1 2 now 2 is greater than 1 when it comes to integer but when it comes to these strings or classes iris setosa is nowhere greater than iris versicolor so we need a way to introduce columns in in the in our y data so for each class we have the column so for zeroth class we have this column for first class we have first column for second class we have second column and when that class is true then we set it as one and all the other is set as uh, zero so you see that when it is zero then zeroth class is one when it is two then the second class is uh, uh, over here when it is two the second class is one and all the other uh, columns are zero so it is very now we are converting this x to uh, array and this y to array by using x is equals to np dot array and y is equals to np dot array and this is just printing the shape of the data you see that over here the shape of the x is 149,4 and the y is 149,3 then over here we are creating a first input layer of our neural network which has the input of shape 4 obviously you see that the number of column or number of features of x is 4 so we have the input then after that we created another layer of dense which has 32 neurons activation is value and it is connected to the previous input layer and after that finally we have the output layer since the data is not very big and complex so we need very simple model to train on this so after that we have the output layer which has obviously three columns since why have the three columns three classes we want to predict 
and we want to assign the probability to each class and all of them when summed up will sum up to one so for that we using softmax function activation function and that is connected to the previous layer which is nothing but x and after that we create the model which we have imported the library from keras.models import model and the input is this input layer and the output is this output layer and this is model r model and after that we are saying model.compile with these particular parameters and we are fitting our model onto this data uh, uh, actually we can just fit on all of the data uh, that was just for training and testing to check our how how good our model is fit so after that we are fitting on x and y which we have already created our data and epochs we are uh, let's say 30 epochs are enough i would say then we are just saving our model model.h5 then we are uh, uh, creating a list of array uh, this will be the all the labels i would say so after that we are iterating in labels which remember is the dictionary of all the classes we have assigned unique integers to them so we are iterating in using the key so for k in labels or keys arr dot append that particular key value so arr will be all the classes we have after that we are saving this array by converting saving this arr list by converting this to array and giving the name labels dot npy by using np dot save function all right so this was all about our model so i will quickly run this script and we would have if everything goes right we would have model.h5 and labels.npy in our directory so now it comes to deployment of our model so first of all we will import the import the model so for that we need a library called from keras.models import load model since we have saved the keras model and also we need numpy to load our uh, the labels so numpy import numpy as np so that we can convert the prediction into the string yeah all right so now we will load the model i'll say model is equals to load model and you have to give the path which is in the same directory by the name of model.h5 and then we need the labels so labels is equals to np.load and then again the name which is labels.npy so we can save this so we have our model we have our labels now we just need the input from the user so we can create four such field number fields something like this very simple and straightforward and i guess this is in integer form or float form but still on the safe side we'll typecast it to float so i'll just do for all of this and let's give the different name so i would say a b c and d that's it so we can give the name to this field so i would just directly uh, you know with when we downloaded our model we have this field name sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width these are the four features user have to input so i'll just directly replace this field one field field one to all of these names all right so there we are after that we have to assign uh, load the prediction by using when the button is clicked so we have these values in these variables a b c d now we just have to say model dot predict at this so we'll just store the prediction in this variable we can say model dot predict model dot predict and we have to pass the array of this a b c d right so we can say np dot array and pass this as the list a b c d this will be a 1d array so we can reshape it to uh, 1 comma minus 1 if you want to know what this function do 1 dot reshape 1 comma minus 1 i will link the video in that i button and in the description if you want to check that out so now after that we have the prediction now we can convert this prediction since this will be a integer we can convert this to string or the particular class by using the labels so that is why we have saved and load our labels over here so we can say labels and we can uh, say np.argmax is a function np.argmax we can pass this prediction so i uh, so i can just show you what does this do uh, I can just print the prediction over there and after that I'll print np.argmax I can pass the prediction and after passing this from the la uh, label we can again print the prediction and after that we can show it to the user uh, this prediction by using few functions again uh, I have already shown you one which is st.text for now let's just use st.subheader to give it some bold and large size we can use sp.subheader and we can give this prediction let's save this and again run this by saying streamly run app.py and once you hit run a browser will open in the same directory all right so let's try giving some values quickly 1.2 these are completely random values i can click on print and 
let's see what happens so we got the iris status as the prediction and that is what i was showing you uh, the prediction is the array 0 0.4 0 0.2 0 0.3 the np dot argmax the np dot argmax returns the uh, the prediction with the highest prediction highest prediction is 0 0.45 so it returns zero index and when we pass the zero from the labels we get our prediction so that is that is what the np dot argmax is doing now the last thing to give a nice little touch to our app so i have downloaded these images from the google and we can show the uh, with the prediction we, with the class of the prediction we can show the particular image so set also for virginica and for versicolor so we can say if if there is a function again in streamlit which is st dot image which is used to show the image to the user now it can be uh, array but it can also be the path so for for example let's say if i want to show to the user setosa image so i can say st dot image setosa dot jpg since it is in the same directory so what i can say if the prediction is, is equal to that particular class so since the classes we have is iris setosa so if the prediction is iris setosa then we can say that st dot image setosa dot jpg then we can say if l l if if the prediction is equals to uh, let's say the another class is iris versicolor then we can say that st dot image that particular image uh, which is iris versicolor which i have saved by the name of this iris versicolor dot jpg and then finally else the last prediction would be obviously the virginica so i would say after all show the image of virginica all right so let's run this once again and let's open the browser just rerun it and now if i click on predict then you see that with the class of the prediction we'll get the image also similarly there are so many functions available you can head to the doc official documentation of streamlit all right so this is i guess enough for the deployment of your basic model which uh, includes the input and the output so this is it for this video and in the upcoming videos we are going to go much deeper in it we are going to deploy uh, the deep learning models include the processing to the real-time webcam feed of the user webcam and then we are also going to see how you can deploy it on cloud so that it can be accessed from any device so i am very excited for the upcoming videos i hope you are also so this is it for this video i hope you enjoyed this video all the code will be in down description github link you can check that out so till then goodbye and keep coding